So in today's lecture, we will introduce two algorithms that may be used to solve unconstrained nonlinear programs. So they would be called gradient descent and Newton's method. We will talk about the details later. So here we are talking about unconstrained problems because this is the starting point for us to study solving nonlinear programs. If there are some constraints, the problem would be, in some sense, much harder. Uh, but certainly there are some ways, but we are not able to talk about them in this particular lecture. Okay, so we will focus on unconstrained problems, and maybe that will give you some starting points that future in the future you may learn constrained programming. Okay, so we will try to say that we want to solve this problem. We want to minimize f of x, where your x is um, r n vector, okay? And we will assume that your f is twice differentiable, so that would make the lecture easier. Certainly, you may also deal with non-differentiable functions, and that sometimes happens. For example, if you have a function which contains some kind of absolute value, then it's not really differentiable, all right? But anyway, today we will talk about differentiable functions. We're not going to um, formally define what do we mean by differentiable, but basically that means your functions are smooth. Okay, so at any point, you may either find the first order derivative or you may find the second order derivative. Uh, so that's our meaning for that. Our next step would be to learn about gradients and the Hessians. So that's two things that are uh, somehow you should have learned in your calculus course, all right? But if you have not learned that and or um, you have forget it, then let's take a look at what are them. So for a function where you have n uh, independent variables or n um, x variables, all right? So if that's the case for the n input, we may differentiate the function with respect to each of the input. That would give us a lot of partial derivatives, okay? And once we collect those first order partial derivatives, we're going to get a gradient vector. So let's take a look at this one. If we have a multivariate twice differentiable function, then in that case it's gradient, which is denoted as this one we have a an, an reversed um, triangle. And we put that reversed triangle in front of f. That means we're talking about the gradient. Then the gradient would be the first partial derivative, the second partial derivative, blah, 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 up to the last partial derivative. You collect all of them to give you a column vector. Then that's your gradient. So a gradient is always a vector. If your function has n input, then your gradient is an n by 1 vector, okay? So that's first order derivatives. And also, sometimes we may do second order derivatives, all right? So if that's the case, then we may take f and do the differentiation with respect to x1 twice. Or we may first do it with x2 and then x1, or x1 and then x2, and so on and so on and so on. So if you take all the combinations, you're going to create a Hessian matrix of second order derivatives. Okay? So the Hessian is represented by the reversed triangle with a square. That means a uh, Hessian. And a Hessian is always an n by n matrix if you are having n inputs, okay? So that's a Hessian matrix. So in this course, somehow we have a property showing that all the Hessian matrix would be symmetric, okay? So it doesn't matter whether you do x1 first or x2 first, all right? So uh, we won't prove to you that this is true, but anyway, this is true in the, our lecture. So let's take a look at the numeric example. Suppose your f have three input variables, and the functional form looks like x1 squared plus x2 x3 plus x3 cubed. Then to do the gradient, we take first order derivatives. 
So when we do that with respect to x1, you may see that this one goes to 2x1. And for all the others, you don't have x1. So that's how eventually you get 2x1. Okay? Or if you do that for x3, for example, then you don't have x3 here. Here you only have x2 remains. And here you get 3x2, x3 square. So that's how you get the gradient. Uh, that's how you get the third um, partial derivatives. And uh, collecting all of them, that's how you get your gradient. For Hessian, pretty much you go from a gradient. For this one, you're going to differentiate with respect to x1, you're going to get 2. With respect to x2, you get 0 because there is no x2 here. With respect to x3, you're going to get 0 again. For x3, if you do the same thing, you get 0, 0, and 1. For the last one, if you with respect uh, differentiate it with respect to x1, you get 0. For x2, you get 1. For x3, you get 6, x3. All right? That's how you get your Hessian matrix. Pretty much, you take the elements in the gradient and then differentiate each of them with respect to x1, x2, and x3 again. That's how you get the great uh, Hessian matrix. So this and that, they are general. If you plug in a point, okay, then all you need to do is to just, again, plug in the point, all right? So numerically, if you are talking about the gradient of f at the point 3, 2, and 1, then this would be 6 for the first element. This would be 1 in the second element. And for the last one, it would be 2 plus 3, right? So it would be 5. You simply plug in the values you have at that point, and then that's going to create a numeric vector. That numeric vector would represent the gradient of f at that point. So for Hessian, it's pretty much the same thing. For this particular Hessian, all we need to do is to plug in x3 here. So that would become the numeric value 6. Okay? So the values of a gradient and a Hessian, of course, would be useful later. And we will see how they may be used. So before that, hopefully you do some exercise to make sure that you know what is a gradient, what is a Hessian, and how may you obtain those quantities for a given function.